Hi, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to say that today I'm going to be talking to, uh, to both Shane and Rachel from the Barnsley and Rotherham Chamber of Commerce. So we're going to be talking just generally about business and I guess the, what the impact of the last 18 months and kind of how things move forward. Um, as usual with, with these discussions, if you've got any questions or any, any comments, you can put them in the, um, in the boxes there on the, the various different platforms and we'll, we'll try and cover any of those that come in. Um, we will also. This is also recorded, so it'll go on our YouTube channel and, and stay on the social media channels as well. So if you are watching it on demand, as it were, please feel free to ask the questions, and I'm sure I, I can forward it on to, to these two guys, and they'll we'll try and answer it. So um, before we before we move on to the discussion, um, if you're okay to introduce yourself, um, Shane, if I can go to you first, just to quickly introduce yourself, and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, hi Michael, hi everyone. So my name's Shane Young, I'm from Barnsley Modern Chamber, as you know. I'm Head of Commercial and Partnerships at, at Barnsley Modern Chamber, so uh, I manage the, the membership in effect, the membership offering, the servicing of, of the membership. Uh, and that's myself just for the time being, and we'll go more into other areas, and I'll pass to Rachel. So hi everybody, yeah, my name is Rachel Nunn, I also am with the Barnsley Mother and Chamber of Commerce and I am the membership executive. So it's my role to go out, um, introduce ourselves to businesses and show them the benefits of coming on board with the Chamber of Commerce. Fantastic, thank you guys. So, uh, you know, I, I touched on it there in the introduction, it's been a, um, should we say, a challenging 18 months for everybody involved. You know, I, I, you know how, what have you guys been doing and how have you been supporting businesses in during the last 18 months and obviously as we move forward as well so what, what have you guys been up to yeah it's been it's been a very challenging 18 months to say the least really for for, for businesses for ourselves as a business as well but what, what what we've done is we've focused a lot of our efforts on our members and, and supporting them uh, regularly from being at the forefront of getting the government announcements out around the different schemes such as the job retention scheme grants, other schemes available and initiatives really. Uh, we've been refreshing members regularly on all the membership benefits, including the important HR, health and safety and legal services that each member of the chamber has access to. And we, we've, like I said, we we focused all our efforts on, on members and what we did in the first couple of months, we, we called all our members uh, just to touch base with them, to let them know that we're here, we will be keeping them updated with everything uh, right at the start of the pandemic um, and, and, and we've continued to do that for literally like we said for the last 18 months. Rachel? Yeah um, I agree with you Shane and to be honest with you dur during the pandemic we've actually increased our retention rate um, to 94 percent because we have been there to show members that we are there to support them in whichever way we can. Um, now, members have needed different things from us, whether it be to do with furlough, using the HR side of, of advice and the legal side, to health and safety with regards to working safely around COVID um, and the, le the legal side as well. So the other great thing that, that, Sheffield, that Shane has done um, through our working group is actually develop the Health and Wellbeing Forum, haven't you, Shane? So I don't know if you want to just touch yeah, on that because yeah. I think that's been a fantastic benefit. Absolutely, that was a, 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 a kind of new initiative from Barnsley and Modern Chambers' point of view to have a, a focus on health and well-being. Because, like you said, Michael, it's been extremely challenging for for people and for business over the last eighteen months. And the people element is is massive. Uh, our, our culture at Barnsley and Modern Chambers is very personable. Hence, the why I mentioned that we've called all our members and to keep in touch with them. We did that right at the early stages of the pandemic. And the health and well-being forum is made up of around a dozen members of the chamber who are experts in their field around health and well-being including the likes of um, coaches people who have been trained uh, in stress anxiety we've got westfield health who are a large corporate in the area on the forum and, that, and that's worked really really well and businesses have really liked the fact that we we're thinking about the people behind the business name behind the brand name and that's gone down really really well with ran a number of events throughout the last 18 months focusing on health and well-being so yeah that's uh, that's kind of the forum as such yeah i think what you've said there as well is it's so important i think that one thing that we've kind of probably all learned in the last 18 months is around the importance of a of a community of support around us it's always been the case it's not never not been the case but 
more now and i guess the, the work you guys doing that's just been yeah, it's been more it's been needed more than ever hasn't it mm, absolutely definitely and it, it's all good to have the business name and the brand and the awareness but like i keep saying it's, it's people that need the support behind that business uh, and that's what we've really focused on over the last 18 months is supporting the people which in effect in turn does support the business oh absolutely um and obviously kind of on this matter as we're obviously filming this on um, what's known as freedom day on july the 19th <laughs> yeah. um, it'd be interesting to know from you guys kind of how the, the people you've kind of hit the nail on the head there Shane. the people as well as the businesses are kind of feeling about things when we've got to this stage which kind of should be the end but it isn't in any way shape or form isn't it so it'd be interesting to know from your experience the people you're speaking to how they're feeling about things yeah if you don't mind me, Rachel, just jumping in. I, I think people are of the similar mindset to how, I know this is stage four, but how stage three was. So I think we're definitely not over the pandemic by any stretch. And the government are doing what they can to support everyone, people, businesses, in terms of coming out of the pandemic. And I think there's, um, there's a lot of thoughts around the do's and don'ts, what the right thing is to do, what the wrong thing is to do. And, and ultimately, like we were talking off air michael about the face masks and that that's it's not a mandatory thing but it's almost a choice and i think we'll find out over the next couple of weeks what those choices will be from people and rachel you've been out and about this morning visiting i have people and we had a we had a zoom catch up when you were in costa yeah <laughs> so and yeah. how was it out there People are wearing face masks. I walked into one business and uh, this morning and they had their face masks on. So straight away I stopped and I put mine on. And I think, um, and even walking into Costa, I put my face mask on. I didn't feel comfortable really going in without it. Um, and I do think it's going to take a while for people to adapt and change that. And I think the face mask is going to be here to stay for a while. Just on people's personal preference really. But I think we've each got to respect each other and I certainly respect businesses when I walk in. You know, if they're wearing them, I'll put mine on. Um, and I, I do think that it's going to be the way it's going to be for a while, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I was, I was telling Shane earlier as well, you know, I, I've, I've, been on, I've been on the train this morning um, to, out myself and um, the vast majority of people were wearing masks. Um, I, I haven't been on a train for so long, so I, I can't really compare it to anything, but I'm assuming it was probably very similar numbers because the vast majority of people did, so nothing seemed to have really changed. Mm. Um, so it's interesting to see how that that plays out. Um, so kind of moving on to, I guess, more the positive sides of what's gone on in the in the last year or so is it about what businesses and people have learned during this pandemic and how, and how they're actually going to come out stronger. Again, you know, you guys are talking to businesses all the time. Kind of, what's the general consensus on that? Well, Rachel and I were talking about this actually um, earlier on in terms of what what businesses have done, what they've learned. Come, coming towards the end of the pandemic I keep stressing that it's definitely not over and it's not especially for business but uh, businesses have definitely had time to reflect and adapt to the the different new ways of working not the normal and everyone does these speech brackets when they say normal nowadays but <laughs> they've definitely had time to uh, reflect and, and think about things and it's been from our point of view working with 1100 uh, members of the chamber uh, for the last 18 months and talking to them on a regular basis. It's been great to see the grit and determination by the local business community, them all, all coming together to say, you know what, we need each other and we can get through this if we help each other. And that's been fantastic to see. And our, ourselves as a business, we've we've learned a lot. We, we again, have had time to reflect and adapt. We, we've looked at things in-house and and try to improve the best we can around different systems etc and Rachel you were talking about systems earlier on weren't you in terms of what businesses have done not just in terms of the reflection and the uh, and adapting to it but actually what they've invested in from an infrastructure point of view. Definitely definitely I think um, a lot of businesses maybe got into the comfort zone prior to the pandemic in terms of using a web well servers on site uh, rather than being in the cloud, um, not having the software infrastructure for people to be able to work from home as effectively as they could do, having to set up VPNs. Um, mm. So I think in terms of businesses and looking at a positive, 
it's meant that they've had to maybe step out of their comfort zone and looking at changes, but in a positive way. Um, so looking at CRM systems, looking at websites, looking at those integrations and how people can actually work from home um, rather than going into the office and, and going onto the local server, etc. So I think it's been a positive change, but a shocking change and ones that people have had to make quickly. But a lot of businesses are, have done very well with it. Yeah, and, and we sorry, Michael, just to add on to that as well, we talk about kind of Zoom being the new thing, and realistically, it's not new. Skype was here for a number of years. There was other platforms and programs uh, available, and I think we've just been forced, at, we've had, had our hand forced a little bit into using them more, but they can be used for so many positive things, and we'll touch on the events that we do and, and the different ways we've adapted our business in terms of to make it a positive uh, experience for our members uh, with the different things we've done but yeah Skype Skype's been here for years and but it's easy to say I'll, you know what let's meet for a coffee instead and we know business is done properly and relationships are built properly by having that face-to-face -face kind of initial contact but there's so much more you can do with Zoom with Teams with uh, obviously this itself in StreamYard etc so it's not a new thing it's just we've been forced a little bit to use it more I'd probably say I agree with that, Shane. And who would have thought that would have been in a client's office right now on on a on a Zoom call? Um, yeah. So yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I think it's given us this kind of. You quite right, as I said, it's, the technology's been there for ages, Shane. And twelve years ago, I was working for a video conferencing company. It was there, and it was, but it was only used at the kind of very exceptional cases. But um, you know, it's given us again. We, we talk a lot about choice, don't we? And a lot about um, flexibility when we talk about people working from home and. Things like that. That that also applies for events and meetings and everything like that. It's kind of what we expect in our lives now. You know, we, we most of us, if you're watching TV, you're probably watching Netflix or Amazon or something like that. It's it's on demand. It's flexible. It's convenient. So we kind of starting to expect that in all facets of his life. I think, um, and that's maybe where businesses now, have, quite certainly, have had, have had to adapt quickly, but but have done, and hopefully they'll see some longer term benefits from that. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you mentioned there, you mentioned your events there, Shane, probably a good time. If you, if you want to tell us about what you guys have been doing in terms of the events, keeping keeping in contact with people. Yeah, yeah. so for the last 18 months, our events programme went from everything cancelling overnight, all the face-to-face -face stuff, to, well, what can we do different and how can we give our members a positive experience to still give them opportunities to build their pipeline, to network, to build relationships, because that's what a chamber is pretty much all about amongst other uh, good stuff that we do. So we, we've we gone with very much an online program for uh, probably for around 15 months and we've started now uh, and we're really excited about having some face-to-face -face events planned. We, we did one with the other two chambers in South Yorkshire, Doncaster and Sheffield Chamber of Commerce at the, uh, at the beginning of July at the Yorkshire Wildlife Park and that was a networking session and who would have thought we'd all be 100 businesses socially distant and in, in small groups we're walking around in wild, uh, Yorkshire Wildlife Park building relationships. It's, it's, it's almost, it, it's crazy is probably the wrong word, but it's, it, it's crazy to a degree in terms of no one would have ever thought that, but well, why not? It, it, it was such a fantastic event. Social media was, was booming with all the all all the photos, all the videos, all the support from people who went on the day. So, yeah, we, we we've adapted really really well from a uh, an online calendar uh, of events. But what we're doing going forward is we're so excited to welcome back our exhibition in September. Chamber means business. We're running a celebration for business uh, large uh, event at Magna in November. So we've got some exciting things happening. But I think going forward. I think it's right. It's fair to say, and this isn't just Shane or Rachel saying it at Barnes and Rotherham. We've consulted with our members. We definitely feel that we should be offering a hybrid approach. So we've got some online stuff and offline stuff, as in face-to-face -face, uh, events, and that brings in and draws in different audiences. Because not, and you were talking, Rachel. Uh, I think last week about the events. Not everyone likes to attend a face-to-face -face networking event, but they'll be more comfortable online and you've you've been to a lot of events online Rachel I don't know if there's anything you you want to say on that at all yeah I think there's different audiences for both 
some people just have not engaged online at all over the pandemic. They just don't feel comfortable with it. Um, and I get that. It took me a while to be able to see myself when I'm on a Zoom or a Teams meeting. It's not pleasant, but I've got used to it now. Um, so there are some people that will come back and engage more on the face to face. But I do think the online will always have a place and a positive place mm. because we haven't got the travel. Uh, we can fit it in more easily into our timetable. And only this morning I signed up a member who really just wants to engage with the online events. So I think, you know, it's brought about a positive change in terms of uh, time management for us all, uh, that we can do that blend of both. And I think both will bring just as much positives as the, as the other. I agree with that, Rachel. And obviously, me and you were on a, a panel a few weeks ago, and we were discussing mm. this with a few people there. And and, um, and I, I've had a lot of discussions with people about events. And I, I've actually, I'll be honest, I've been slightly surprised by how many people want to keep doing at least some online. I, I kind of was in the impression that people would be desperate to get back first face. And some people are, as you quite rightly touched on, but most people are generally saying that a bit of a hybrid approach. Mm. That's the general consensus, isn't it, from, from my discussions anyway? Definitely. Mm. Definitely. Definitely. I think people attending the online, but everyone's very forgiving now. And if, if someone, slight, whoever the host is, slightly messes up a breakout room, it's not the end of the world. It's not a big thing anymore. And and people are definitely a lot more forgiving with things. And we've seen some really funny memes and videos on, uh, on, on online, on the, on the internet and through the media about different items being placed on bookshelves. Uh, kids running into different rooms when when the, someone's in a meeting or at an event, and that that that's kind of bringing the the humour to it a little bit. And I think it's needed. And Rachel's exactly right; it's a positive change that we've done. And I think to continue that, consulting our members if that's the right thing for them, which it is at this point, then we will continue to do so. Really. And what I will say is about that face to face event that we had at the Yorkshire Wildlife Park. If you ask many people, how many people actually stopped to look at looked at the animals? And I'll tell you now, it'd be about 10% because everybody was just so pleased to see people and just engage <laughs> and talk to people. They didn't look at the animals. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I think we'll kind of have this kind of initial bounce, won't we, as, as, as obviously things start to open up. And, and, and I, I personally think things might maybe calm down from September and, and the whatever the horrible phrase new normal is. Um, mm -hmm. Will start to start to play out maybe from September. I think once like, kids are back at school and all that kind of stuff. Fingers crossed, obviously. Anyway, um, yeah, I think it might start to to calm down from there. But um, you know, I'd love to know about you guys in terms of just just generally about chamber, you know, because what support what support in general do chambers offer to businesses? Because there'll be a lot of people who would be probably most people have heard of chamber of commerce, but might not be aware of the the work you do. So it'd be really interesting to find out just generally kind of forgetting about the last 18 months and what the type of support you offer. Yeah, you can lead this if you want, Rachel, it being a big focus of what you do. Yeah, uh, basically, I always say we are there to help develop, support and grow uh, your business. And we do that through a variety of ways. Um, and I think a lot of it that I always talk about initially is stood out on its own, which is the HR, the health and safety, the tax, the legal, the VAT side. Um, whether that be downloadable documents or just the 24-7 uh, support um, hotline that we have available. Um, but I think it's come into its own that businesses have just had somebody there that they can ring um, and say, can you help? I need advice with, or do you know somebody that can do X? Um, and certainly during the calls that, that I made over the pandemic, um, I think that's what's increased our retention rate is because we have been there to say what we are going to do. Um, yeah, we, we are there to support businesses. Um, and I think everybody joins the chamber and looks at the chamber for different things. So whether it be that support, whether it be the networking events and the collaboration and meeting people, um, or whether it be through discounts for training or export services, um, yeah, we've come into our own and, you know, going out to businesses, I always ask them, what do you do? What are you looking for from the chamber? How can we help you? And everybody joins for different reasons. But, you know, we're there to help everybody across a variety of things, even down to discounts with your AO breakdown cover. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're, we're a great support to businesses. And we, we reach out to all shapes and sizes, don't we, Rachel? We've got a membership 
of a, of eleven hundred of from sole traders right through to large corporates, educational institutes. And Rachel's exactly right. In my seven years I've been at the chamber, I've learned that each business joins the joins the chamber for very different reasons. But actually the core of what the chamber offers is all there for everyone. It's choice based. So it all depends on what you, the business owner or that business needs. But they might join for a particular reason, whether it's networking events, but then they didn't realise until they speak to Rachel or myself about all the other great stuff that we can offer and well, I didn't know you did that. And then that's also a way for them to access all the benefits of, well, I just thought a chamber was networking. A lot of people say, oh, I thought the chamber was uh, part of your local authority or part of the government. No, we're a standalone business, absolutely. We're part of the British Chamber Network and we're an accredited chamber, which means we're one of 53 up and down the country. Uh, some are large chambers cover different counties, like East Midlands Chamber covers three counties. We're Barnsley and Rotherham, but we handle our own because of the, the people that we've got working at Barnsley and Rotherham Chamber, the personable culture we've got, and, and kind of that that on-the-ground presence. Yes, we sit in meetings strategically with local authorities and the Sheffield City region, but we also go out on our breakfast with a, with one of our, with, with a member and just get to know them, and like I keep saying it, about that person behind the brand. So we cover all aspects of, of business support, really. Do you think one of the strengths of the chamber as well is the the wide variety of people involved? Because most um, business groups, shall we call it generically, and I would include Northern Affinity in this, have a certain profile of types of business. And like, for example, with us, it's generally business to business services. That's what we have. But there is lots of other types of businesses there. There's retail, there's leisure, there's tourism, there all these other types of businesses. So whilst there is an advantage to a certain extent having a certain type there also is a nice advantage to having a depth and breadth of different types of businesses involved as well do you mind if i answer that one shane no go for it i i totally agree with you i mean at the minute i'm a, a company that does electrical gate installations um and they've never done networking before uh, primarily they wanted to speak about their export docs and discounts and discounts for training but do you know what they want to now come along to the networking events um and have asked what they consist of and and how they do it so and then earlier today i was with a musician um who wants to engage with the chamber because they want to do corporate branding in terms of maybe your answering machine messaging or and things like that so i agree with you michael the chamber is very very vast in terms of your big manufacturers your engineering companies down to, down to your sole traders and we are there we treat everybody equally Mm -hmm. um and everybody wants the same sort of support but maybe in different ways um so yeah. so yeah and, and to add to that rachel I, I've, I've seen a copying system company today i've seen uh, a fantastic legal firm in, in rotherham and so that's already probably five or six businesses mm -hmm. that rachel and i have talked to and it's not even 3 p.m plus all the other work that chamber colleagues are doing um that are that aren't on this call uh, as such so we we talk to a lot of businesses who all want different things. And the beauty about it, and the reason I love my job is because every day is different. You go to see a different company that day, a different person that day. And then I'm at Yorkshire Wildlife Park walking around with a yeah. new the following day. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so random, but but brilliantly random. Yeah. I, I like the fact that, like I said, it brings, that, it brings people from such different, I guess, walks of life together that doesn't mm -hmm. mean always happen in other areas i think that i think that's a real strength of it and that as we know with with networks of people you you start expanding it so it, it just it goes out and out and out to everybody then that that is that is nothing but a positive in my eyes Definitely. so uh, you mentioned there about the the chamber network chain about all the different ones what is the difference i guess i, I guess obviously the people involved is a pretty obvious answer but generally is there, is there much difference between the different chambers um, across the country um, every every chamber has the same core principles in terms of what they do. They all offer a membership uh, which supports business and it's up to that business to tap into that network, that membership, access the benefits. However, there are different chambers around the UK who have a slightly different focus. Some focus on, on educational projects. Some chambers focus heavily on international trade, which is great and it's such a need and in their particular area for uh, area for example just the bonds in modern chambers focus has always been 
for its members? What are we doing to look after that one man band right through to looking after that company that's got 2,000 employees? And I personally think that is the right approach and we can see that in the retention figures, in how we are with our members, with our reputation. Our reputation is fantastic because we're there for people. Rachel said earlier in terms of we care about people, we're there. They feel like they can... They're not ringing the chamber, they're ringing Rachel at the chamber. So it's that personal touch. But to come back to it, yes, the BCC are fantastic. The British Chamber of Commerce are fantastic at influencing um, the government on policies they're making, on certain things strategically that they're involved in. We get a, a vast source of information from the British Chamber around government announcements, especially with the pandemic. That's We were at the forefront of hearing about those so we could get them out to our local businesses as much as we can. So every chamber is different. They all offer the same core principle in terms of the membership and business support. That should be what a whole chamber is all about, really. I don't know if there's anything you've got, Rachel, because you, Rachel, seen it from both sides. Before she worked for Barnes and Modern Chamber, she was a member of Barnes and Modern Chamber, so you can probably answer it from both sides, Rachel. Yeah, I was a, a member of the chamber before I actually worked with them, and I saw the benefits. And to me, uh, the chamber was was a no-brainer, um, and I definitely got a lot out from it. But yes, you're right. We've all got the same core, but the perimeters are very different in terms of how we operate. So, for example, like Lincoln, there's a lot of farmers and a lot of ag agricultural out there. Uh, Leeds is very fast paced in terms of um, business. So and I always I've always said to Andrew, Andrew, why would you say we're different? He went, we're nice people. And do you know what? But do you know what? As a member myself, before I started working, he's right, because I would go to an event. I would step into that room. And Andrew would be there, Shane would be there, Diane would be there, and everybody was so friendly and so welcoming. Um, so, yeah, from a, from a member side, I, I would say that's what I notice more about the Barnes and Wuthering Chamber. And, and what I would add to that as well is there are 53 accredited chambers around the UK. Some of them look after big regional patches, counties. In South Yorkshire, there's three accredited chambers. There's ourselves, there's Sheffield, and Doncaster Chamber of Commerce. And we all do fantastic things as three chambers representing the South Yorkshire business community. Our focus might be slightly different in terms of what we do. But like Rachel said, we all offer a very, very similar um, focus when it comes to our members. And the relationship between the three chambers is fantastic. We collaborate on a lot of things with them. We mentioned the Yorkshire Wildlife Park. That was a joint venture between each, uh, each South Yorkshire chamber. So... Collaboration is key, especially because we're working in South Yorkshire. It's not, I want more business from Rotherham or I want more business from Doncaster. It's they want more business, they want more profiling across South Yorkshire. And the only way that can happen through Chambers is by collaborating. We don't, we're not in the same office. We're three separate businesses, but we do a lot together representing businesses across South Yorkshire, whether that's strategic, operationally, on the ground, or running uh, small events together as well. I think what you've touched on there as well, that importance of not looking outside your area as well and is, is, is important. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, we've never been more connected than we are right now or have been for the mm. last 18 months, actually. It's how much easier it is. Actually, it doesn't really matter if you're talking to your next door neighbour or someone 100 miles away. Mm. It's a lot easier to do business that way now. So um, being able to adapt and, and suit that kind of world is, is obviously really important. Um, so just the last the last question for me really was just a just general piece really about obviously the the health side of the pandemic is one side of things but there's the economic side of it now that's going to be i would imagine a big focus in the next few years how important do you think the businesses that you guys are speaking to are for that recovery because yes obviously from an, an economic economic point of view but maybe from a social and, and cultural point of view the quicker we can recover it might help people move on a bit better as well would you would you think that'd be sounds about right absolutely business is key getting businesses um thriving again is key to the local economy growing absolutely because it's not just business to business it's like you said your retail it's your hospitality industries all these industries need to get back to do what they do best which is servicing their customers to the best of their ability and like i said earlier the grit and determination by the south yorkshire local business community has been fantastic to see. We've been at the forefront of that. We've been speaking to all our members to really understand what they need from us. And 
yeah, the local economy will recover absolutely, and there's some a lot of positives to take from the last 18 months, which have been unbelievably difficult and challenging. But there's a lot of positive to take to take in terms of, like I've said, about collaboration, about working together, about seeing it as one business community rather than just I'll keep my cards close to my chest and, and I'll do what I do. Let's talk, let's work together. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you want to pick up on, Rachel, from what you've spoken to, uh, to businesses out there, but that's kind of my approach on it, really. Yeah, I agree. And just to touch on what Michael said as well, I think things have changed. And when I'm on some events now, there might be somebody down in Bournemouth, there might be somebody down up in Scotland. But I always say to them, if you're looking to do business across the South Yorkshire City region, then, yeah, we, we can support you. If you're looking to do business in your area, then I would recommend your own chamber. And to be honest with you, that's what I've done. Um, and I've actually referred people to the local chambers. So I think it's just helping support businesses, no matter where they are in the country, but with their best interests at heart as to which area they should focus on for that help and support. And mm -hmm. if that be across the South Yorkshire City region, that they're looking to do business, whether they're based in, in Bournemouth or or Scotland, then, then so be it. And I think that, that that's changed immensely. Absolutely. And I generally think we're not out of the woods yet, especially with the job retention scheme coming to an end, uh, businesses paying back the C-bills loan, the B-bills loans. Absolutely. It's still going to be a challenging time. But what we've seen so far the last 18 months, like I'm saying, and I keep going back to it really, that grit and determination and pushing things through, then we will come out thriving we will come out in a very positive light and there's a lot of government initiatives we've seen all that there's a lot of local uh, authority initiatives as well such as the likes of working on our patch rido rotherham investment development office at the rotherham council which is the business arm around rotherham council enterprise in barnsley which is the equivalent in barnsley the growth of they're all there to support business and we're all working together to have that one goal and that's to come out of this and uh, thriving and just to add to that, Shane, I think something else that we've developed during the pandemic um, through our skills and working groups is our member-to-member -member mentoring. So if anybody is looking for help or support that are a member within the Barnes and Rotherham Chamber, no matter whether it be health and wellbeing, whether it be business growth, sales and marketing, um, internet, IT support, we have got members who are offering their time for free as a mentor to other members and that is actually on our website. And I think that's been a phenomenal support and it will be certainly going forward um, as well. And that's an initiative that's been brought about, Shane, by one of the groups that you lead, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That were, that were better than a TV advert, that, Rachel. That would be really <laughs> <laughs> It's because I believe in it so much, you see. <laughs> it's there to help businesses. And and do you know what? To get out of this, it's not going to be easy for them. Bringing people back from furlough to be able to regenerate those sales again, to keep those people employed, it's going to be a challenging time. But if we can be there to help and support those businesses through that, and Michael, we touched on this um, at the Northern Affinity event, you know, with your HR, your health and safety, there are going to be people that are afraid to come back into the workplace, but the employers need them to be in that workplace. And if we can help them do that, then, then that's what we're there to help do. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I, I think that's a great place to finish the, the questions. And I think Rachel <laughs> asked great and really positive ones. So if people want to find out more about, about you guys and what you do, where's where's the best places to go or to contact you? What, what's the best things for them to do? You can get everything that we've talked about, all the information. The website's updated on a daily basis through our awesome marketing colleague, Kieran. You can go on the website, brchamber.co.uk. Um, you can find me and Rachel on LinkedIn. Uh, just search for our names and we'll be on there. And we're more than happy to talk to anybody uh, about their business and understand what the Chamber can do to help them. That's great. Yeah, and if anyone, for whatever reason, can't find the right details, you know, please come to me as well and, we, and Northern Affinity and we can, we can pass those on. Um, so, yeah, the, just finally for me, thank you guys for your time. I really, really appreciate this. I really enjoyed the conversation. I think it's such important work that you're doing and um, will continue to do. And and um, looking forward to supporting you in any way we can. And um, yes, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Well, thanks for the opportunity. See you later.